Boom! It's time for episode number four of the Vandy Vlog! Last time, we had Ugly. Time before that, we had Tyler Jones. This week, we got the promoter, the the idealist, the man, the myth, the legend, the promoter, that is Troy. Mother effing, because we can't swear on this program, Peter. Son, joining us. You know, that's the most enthusiastic introduction I've ever had in my life. Well, so, you know, you. I went to radio school, so... I gotta, I, I gotta give everybody the props. Yeah. I gotta give everybody the props. You are the promoter of Impact Pro Wrestling. You and I, we worked together for a few years now, about four years in May. You've obviously worked with tons of people before, and there's so many guys you've been able to, you know, just do shit with. And I cussed, boom, put that in the piggy bank, mom. <laughs> Anyways, on the program, we talk about wrestling. Troy, what got you into professional wrestling? Oh, man, I think, you know, what got me into it is the same thing that got everybody into it. I mean, you're just a fan as a kid. I mean, I grew up with guys like Baron Von Raschke and, you know, the Crusher and the Road Warriors and all these bigger-than-life characters. And I just, I always wanted to put together matches. I always wanted to see these, you know, gladiators take on each other. I never wanted to be a wrestler. It was never something that was on my plate. So... And uh, so then I moved to Oskaloosa, Iowa, and, and we are going to die right here. Okay, here okay, follow sorry. that guy. Dig follow left. that guy. Follow that guy. What's awesome is we're on the way to our <laughs> Forte <laughs> Center <laughs> in Beretta's for what is going to be an awesome night, the uh, Steel Cage Show. Okay, going on now as well. I saw Vandy's vlog, <laughs> and I said, man, I saw the second one. I'm like, God, you got to do this in the car. You know, that's, he did it in the car. I thought it looked great, but... I'm instantly now second guessing. No, second guessing. <laughs> I think we should go just to a house somewhere. Safe. And do it. But Safe whoa! Place. I now I gotta now I gotta clean my pants. That's nuts. <laughs> but we're talking how you got into wrestling. You loved wrestling. Yeah, I loved it. it. And so we moved to Oskaloosa. I didn't really know anybody. It was a new town for me. I was you know kind of in a trans transitional period. And so you know, I talked to Mike Ingebrigtsen, lifelong fan and friend, and like, hey, what, what does it take to do a wrestling show? You, know, you need a building. You need a ring. You need wrestlers and We'd worked with guys like J.B. Trask, who's helping them out, and some other promoters up in Minneapolis. And so, when it came time to do it, we just did it. And, you know, the show was, I mean, as cumbersome and as overbooked as you could possibly imagine. And it was, <laughs> and it was terrible. And uh, but, but, I mean, the wrestling was good. The wrestlers, we brought in, you know, great talent for the time. It's 2001, and we lost our butt, and the, the rest is history. And then it kind of... You know, it's transitioned over the years and kind of, you know, just growing it. And with different people. Mike kind of dropped out in 2004 or five, and then met Trav, and you know, just kind of worked with him more. And of course, then I got married, and she, my, my wife became my, my partner as well. So now uh, it was cool because a, a while back we talked about guys in the business, you know, in professional wrestling. You mentioned Pinky George, yeah. and you were surprised because I said, oh, yeah, you know, he was the promoter for NWA. Right. Uh, but it was because, you know, I had, I had studied a lot back in, you know, when I was, you know, in, like, middle school. I had studied this stuff, and I had studied what guys did and what they did in the Midwest. Who was somebody from the Midwest that you could say, ah, oh, man, I, you kind of looked at them and said, okay, you know, like, you studied them a little bit, and you kind of learned from them? You know, obviously, just the AWA, you know, I, I really... I like the way they. I like the way they did their shows. I like the way they, they uh, did different towns and uh, kept together. You, you gotta understand, this is gonna come across as kind of cumbersome because I think we're gonna die about every forty-five <laughs> seconds. So I kind of get, you know, I lose my words not because I losing my train of thought because Look, I think we are going to die in the road. So, as he said, I though, apologize. as he said, I get a, I get a comment from after the second video. It was kind of cool because I did want to touch on this a little bit. Troy did mention, you know, that he commented on the video, and I was thought, I, I, I was like, oh man, who, what, what's he going to say? Because I hadn't opened it yet, and. Uh, I'm always scared. I want to make sure Troy likes the things I'm doing. I don't want to disappoint. So then I see the comment and I'm like, awesome. And he was, I loved it. It was great. And he said, do it in the car. And uh, some guys were like, oh, do we have to drive around? But then once they started driving around, they were just more open and they were so comfortable. And they're like, we should, we should always do this. Yeah, we should always drive around. So everybody was like, ah, I don't know. I, do I, eh. They're like, let's do it. Uh, Except for the guy who said it. But... I think it's safer in Algona than Des Moines, maybe. But yeah, I mean, hey, hey, you know, although it's raining too, that's another condition that 
raises the anxiety up just a little bit. But we're talking uh, wrestling with Troy Peterson, the promoter for Impact Pro Wrestling. Uh, speaking of ideas like that, um, have you ever thought of an idea that you, uh, at first it was too crazy, but you pulled it off and you're like, awesome, this well, is great. I, I think one of the examples of that was a scaffolding match. I was up in Minneapolis, I was up in Minnesota, and we were in a furniture store. And I saw a scaffolding in the back, and we'd been running the sale for the store. And I'm like, yeah, you know, we, we could put this in a ring and do a scaffolding match. And it doesn't seem impossible. Well, it wasn't impossible, but, man, the anxiety, I mean, was off the roof. I mean, it was, you know, it, it, it looks, it, it was a little rickety. And so um, we did that, though, and it was great. It was fun. And, you know, I, I, it's kind of one of those things I never want to do again. But... We did that, and that was kind of seeing it through fruition. You know, was was really cool. Now, speaking of crazy ideas, cool matches, cool concepts. Tonight we have, and this is being pre-recorded, so you have this about Monday of this week, this coming week. Uh, you, we have two matches inside a steel cage in Des Moines for the first time in many years. Yep. For you, you know, what's that like? You're like, you, you know, the matches are being put together. You're seeing all this come through. For you as a promoter, what's that like to see these matches take place? That's awesome. You know, you think about like, hey, I, the last match I can remember taking place in Des Moines Seven Steel Cage was Big Boss Man Hogan in 1989, <laughs> uh, May 11th, I think, or April 10th. But uh, the, you know, so it's neat to do that to just keep, you know, to do something new and different without it being, you know, still having to have some meaning. You know, these matches in the Steel Cage tonight, they've been building up for months and months. You know, and and Ricky Love and Justin Deason. I think that's I think that's the where I'm getting as I'm getting older. I'm probably maturing a little bit more. Where I am, I'm letting stuff build. I and mean, we we are an instant gratification society. So you're not going to build stuff for two years like they did in the '60s and '70s and build out that long. But I think if you can build something for have a vision for four or five months, then you know you really. I think that's important. So tonight's a culmination of a long time. I think it's pretty important to go. And that's one thing I want to ask you about too. You brought up the point, you know, how it's different how you how you work things now than it was in the sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties even. Um, you know, do you would you consider yourself kind of an old school booker, you know, promoter, or are you kinda of, you can throw some new stuff in? I mean what, what how would you describe yourself? I would say I I would say I'm probably I mean I think everybody wants to say they're old school without really knowing what that is mm -hmm. um i feel like i don't dictate a lot to, to the wrestlers i mean and wrestlers that maybe only been in our locker room would maybe disagree with that but i don't dictate a lot so for me it's more about you're, you're moving stuff forward with the promos and and in a given night with very you know short promos and then you're letting the kind of the wrestling speak for itself and have, have that be the show i think that's an older philosophy than than what a lot of promoters do today. I don't know if there's a right or wrong. You just have to find your audience and what they like. I mean, what I like is different than what I promote, you know, because fans wouldn't like what I like to, you know, see. And so it's it's always kind of trying to know and the shows are different in Algoda than they are in Des Moines. And mm -hmm. I think that's when, go back to AWA, studying them. I mean, they, they did different shows in different parts of the country. When they're in the Cow Palace, they, did, they ran different shows and different vibes than they did when they were in Minneapolis. And I think that's knowing your audience and knowing how to try to you know, connect with them. That's that's the key. Is it kind of a challenge then? I mean, do you, do you like the challenge? Do you embrace that then? Or? I do. It's it's fun. It's fun to be able to go to these towns and kind of go, okay, and you have a, good, a little better idea that, hey, the wrestling fan in Des Moines, just because of the population base, is going to be a, a smarter you know, wrestling fan in the sense that they, they're more familiar with it and, and kind of get it a little bit. So it, it is. It's fun. It's always... And, it's always challenging you know now you have these in the last 10 years it's been a challenge even with fans wanting to cheer the bad guys mm. that's kind of a that could be you got to kind of go with that because that can be frustrating you want yeah. them to cheer how you want them to cheer and boo how you want them to boo you want to be able to be the puppet master and you know but if a crowd's not you know going the way you want to go that's your fault not theirs so i mean you just have to deal with it couple questions before we get out of here and a comment too about that it was kind of funny because uh when ray fearing and i when we first started watching uh impact pro wrestling shows in algona we would boo sparrow sparrow was the good guy sparrow right. was the lovable guy and you know you got sparrow doing the fist pumping on the ring apron and we're just booing him and he kind of looked at us like 
the hell are you guys doing? Like, love me, come on. And uh, it's kind of funny because then once we started training, once we started doing all that, he looked at us he's like, you guys, the kids were booing me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, but it's funny that you said that. You know, it, it, it can be a challenge for the performers sometimes to have to get used to that. Sure. A couple questions before we get out of the program because we've gone long, but I tell you, it's fun. Oh, we're having fun besides almost dying a couple times. Yeah. Um, for you, what's it like right now? I know it's a busy summer schedule coming up. Uh, what's it like and what's happening with IPW? Oh, it's, it's hectic. You know, and we take a little bit of a break now. You know, we get Marshalltown May 21st and then June 18th back in Des Moines. But then July, you know, we have 15 shows. So it's, uh, yeah, but that's exciting to me. And to do, you get a little bit of a taste when you say all old school, things like that. And, you get a little bit of a taste when you're doing shows five, six, seven days in a row. You get a, just a tiny feel of kind of living on the road, and you kind of can you can play wrestling promoter and play wrestler in a in a real world setting. You know, I know it sounds probably ridiculous to non wrestling fans, but it's a fun. I look forward to a couple of those. Um, but then by the end of those, then I I never want to leave again. So um, the house that is, but no, it's it's a great time. I mean. And uh, it's a great time. I, I can't even express to you how upset I am right now because we the train. We just uh, ran into a train, so so we're not gonna move for a while, which yeah. is great. But we're not gonna die for a while either. That's so true. That's even true. better. Um, Waterloo's coming up as well, and that's a very special weekend for a lot of people. Uh, tell us a little bit about that as well. Uh, you know, Waterloo. It's a great weekend. This is by far and away. I mean, we've sold out of these all access passes. And, We've never done that before. I'm not even close to where the number we are. But the, the, but the lineup is just incredible. It's uh, Iron Sheik, Bob Backlund, Chael Sonnen, Magnum TA, Terry Fawn, Lex Luger, Nikita Koloff, you know, Jerry Briscoe, Jim Ross, Baron Von Rashke, Larry Henning. You know, just Ricochet is going to be there. Tessa Blanchard. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's a, it, it's a lineup that if you would have told me, you know, as a kid or as a, an adult 10 years ago that I'd be involved in that and it's it's humbling, it's, it's humbling. I, I'm, I'm a fan you know and I first and I don't ever pretend to really be anything else so it's just a it's a great experience one last question before we get done with this before this battery goes back um where do you see impact for wrestling going in the future where do you want to go you know I think I think we want to go I want to kind of get a couple towns I mean kind of going into Des Moines now you know Marshall Towns had kind of a start stop uh, deal. We'd like to get two or three towns going in that monthly training, and then no really, pun intended. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> or maybe it was. Maybe I'm so uh, sharp. But uh, and then and then really expand, you know, Midwest wide, and not and not five years from now. I mean, this next summer, this summer we're doing you know three four shows in Nebraska. Um, expand more into Minnesota, uh, Missouri, and and do those kind of one off spot shows and those types of in those areas as well so really make it so we don't have a life in the summer <laughs> folks follow impact pro wrestling on facebook as well as twitter they have all the updates and all the news and all the cards coming your way it's just every week you see content for these guys you got to stay in tact with these guys uh stay in contact with these guys because you're going to hear all the stuff that's going on in waterloo you got to be in waterloo it's a great time it's a great weekend and i encourage all the folks to check out the show troy thanks for joining us Thank on you. the mandy vlog episode number four baby i usually do the boom but i'm gonna let you do the boom you just gotta push that red button right there boom